Can everyone see the slime? <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome everyone. See some familiar faces? Welcome. We're going to talk tonight about how you can earn money trading, specifically day trading, specifically shorting, and specifically doing gaps. I see a lot of familiar faces here tonight. Uh, so I think, in fact, I don't see any non-familiar faces. If you are new and don't know what I do, I do gaps. And I've been doing gaps now for, gosh, since 2008. So quite a long time. Thank you, Kathy. And what I love about gaps is that they have big moves. And the reason I prefer to short is because shorting happens quickly. Moves to the downside happen fast. We shorted Apple today. It fell and fell all day, actually. <coughs> so it was a nice trade. Apple's been falling, quite frankly. And this whole idea of earning $20,000 a month or $1,000 a trade or whatever it is that your goal is for trading, whatever your monetary goal, you can earn it in the market because there's billions and billions and billions of dollars that is running through the market in any given day. You only need a small piece of that in order to make money day trading. So you only need a couple thousand shares or a couple hundred shares even will make it for you if you want to be someone that does this for a living. Now, obviously, it depends where you live, how much money you want to make, but I say, Look at it like you're going up the ladder and you're getting on the ladder and you're taking it up to get to the top, all right? You might take 10 steps forward and two steps back, three steps forward and one step back. As long as you're continuing up the ladder, you're going to get there, okay? You're going to get where you want to be. So think about this. Have you ever thought about trading seriously? Not just like on a whim, on the side, going to free webinars like tonight or, you know, going in the chat rooms like Reddit and trading stuff on the fly. I mean, really, 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 really taking it seriously, okay? Which is pretty much what I did from the beginning, to be honest with you. And I do credit myself that and for part of the reason for my own success. I took it seriously from day one. It's just my personality. I'm either all in to something that I want to do if I have a goal or I can't be bothered with it. <laughs> I never half-ass anything. That's just my personality. I'm like a type A personality type of person. But I think with markets, with trading, you have to be that way. Thank you, Kathy. Dude, I see you typing. Or people need help getting in the room? Should we wait or what's going on? Can everybody see the slide? If anybody has any questions, you can write it in the chat and I'll see it and say it out loud. Anyways, if you're someone that wants to make money in the market, then the only way to do it is really to be consistent because you can make money some days and lose money other days. And if overall, if you don't have a consistent strategy to trade, you will lose. Okay, Even people that don't know what they're doing make money some days. That's not the point. The point is to make money more than you lose. Okay, And that means more wins. And the wins have to be bigger wins than the losers. So a lot of times I, 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 I talk to people and sometimes I talk to them and then they come back into my life a couple years later. I find that people, when they have the market bug, they just never give up. They never go away. But they're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you know you're one of these people, if you know you have the market bug, if this is you, then just jump into it. Go for it. Give it your all, like I was saying. I was explaining how my personality is, where I'm all in is something if I want to do it, but a lot of people are not. They put one toe in and then one foot out. And you really have to be 100% committed. This doesn't have to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It doesn't have to be like that, but it has to be 100% committed in the moment that you're trading, in the moment that you want to do it, okay? And you know, specifically what I do, and we're going to talk about the strategy I do here in a little bit, but specifically, the strategy that I trained is sets up in the morning. So you don't have to be at your desk all day. Now, we were in Apple all day to get it down, which was fine. But you could have gotten out of Apple earlier with profit. Again, Apple was a short today. <laughs> but you have to be committed within the time period that you are trading. If it's 30 minutes a day, if it's one hour a day, if you want to train all day for six and a half hours, whatever, you have to be committed. And I'm so committed that I get up early in the morning, the first thing I do is look at the market. And I make my market picks in the pre-market 
I spend the time early before 9.30 to get organized. I feel like the longer time that I spend preparing to trade each day in the pre-market in the morning, the higher chance of success I'm going to have on the day, the bigger the win, and the faster really I can be in and out of the trade if I want to be. Again, Apple was good to hold today, but that, that was a once-off. We usually are out of stuff pretty quick, okay? So ask yourself, do you want to trade the market but don't have a lot of time to devote each day to trading? If you do, if you, if you want to trade but you don't have a lot of time, gaps may be, or shorting specifically, okay, and we're going to talk about gaps and shorts, may be the strategy for you. And this is also a nice way to have extra money per month. No one said you have to quit your job. No one said you have to do this for a living. No one said that at all. I have a bunch of people with me. They're in and out of the room on any given day of the week because they have businesses and they're busy doing stuff. And when they have time, they come in the room and trade. When they don't, they don't. Okay? They like the extra money from trading, but it's not their full-time thing because they like what they're doing for a living. Some people do. <coughs> Some people don't. I didn't like my mortgage job anymore. It was changing. I wanted a new career. So you don't have to do this as your full-time career. You could do something else on the side, okay? But for me, it's about looking for the best pick with the biggest move that has the most momentum. And again, I'm going to explain a little bit here why I like to short. I see some people coming in late. If you have questions, you can plop it in the room. I'm the only person that can see everyone's questions and everyone's here, okay? But if you've been thinking about trading the market or you've been trading the market but you're not doing well or you're not making money and you need to know where to start, then this may be the place, okay? So how do you become successful? You need a strategy, you need a focus, and you need a system. For me, it's gaps. And for me, it's a system I created called the golden gap. And for me, it's a focus, which means one pick a day or maybe two. One or two. I try to be focused and I try to have, I try to have two picks. Because if I have one pick and the one pick doesn't set up, even though I have a top pick, I have a second pick lined up ready to go in case the first pick fails or doesn't set up at all, okay? So that's where I am strategically focused. And I also go to the short side first before I go to the longs. So for me, it was about gaps. This one strategy that I developed and designed, which is professional gaps, which we're gonna explain in a minute, meets my own criteria. They set up fast, they go quick, they set up early in the morning. I live in New York, so I live in Eastern time zone. So the market opens at 9.30, sometimes we're out of trades by 10 a.m., 10.15, sometimes we're out of trades by 9.45, okay? And I'm talking about day trades here, equity trades, all right? I do do options too, but we'll talk about that more later. So what is a gap? <coughs> this is a chart from last week in the market. Market's been all over the place. In fact, I didn't look at how the SPY closed, but it is pretty much irrelevant because we'll look different tomorrow morning than we do even now. The market's been volatile. The market's been choppy. If you don't know what you're doing right now, you're getting chopped to bits and pieces. So let's take a look at this. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Simple. The market closes every day at 4 o'clock and opens at 9.30. And you have trade action that goes off in the post-market after 4 in the pre-market before 9.30 a.m. Trades go off. I don't trade that time period, but people do. All right, institutional money does. And re regular retail traders do too. I just don't. Now, here's a gap down. This is the SPY. This is a daily. Back here, this was January. So the market closed here roughly, snug as a bug, around 385-ish. Boom. Gap down in the morning here, around 382. Fell. You could have shorted this, and it was a big move. Okay? This was basically like a $10 move for the market. That's big. Now, I get up in the morning and I'm looking for to see what's going on here. And if I see a gap like this, I will rate it. And I will say, wait a minute, is this gonna continue to move further down, sell off, or is it gonna rally? Anyways, this fell. Now, again, the reason I like to short is because moves to the downside happen faster than moves to the upside. That does not mean that I don't go long, I do go long. We went long Twitter in the last month. That was a beautiful long. We played it, played it, played it till it stopped working. But the reality is that short moves tend to much, much more often happen faster. So I prefer to be out of trades fast because many, many times you'll have wiggles and jiggles with the market or Fed announcements. And in the past, we had Trump tweets 
that would affect the market. Now, Trump isn't tweeting. He was banned from Twitter. He could be back. We don't know. For now, though, that one aspect of the market that affected the market has disappeared. It's like you can take it off the radar. Sometimes Trump tweets helped our trades. Sometimes they hurt our trades. But that one aspect of market volatility has disappeared, which is surprising considering the volatility we've seen in the last week when you think about it. When you think about it and what, what some of the data, <clears throat> some of the data we got last week, which was good data, but the market fell, okay? So I don't use fundamentals to make my trading decisions. I use technical analysis and specifically technical analysis and gaps. Now, let's look at another one here. This was a gap down too. Market closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Again, you could have shorted the market here and made money. You could have shorted as a day trade or you could have bought a put. Now, I do options too. I buy puts, I buy calls, that's it. I just do straight puts or calls based on momentum trading. And then I do the equity trades. But this was a short and this was a short. Now, after that, this was, actually, this was the end of February. We closed, then we gapped up. So this is a gap up. So this is a bullish gap. So the market closed at four here and opened higher, higher the next day and got bought and then gapped up again and then got bought again. So this was the beginning of February. It feels like a long time ago, but it was really only a month ago or so. And then we rallied. So you could have gone long the market here in this bullish gap and this bullish gap could have gone long too. Now, do I go long every bullish gap? No. Do I short every bearish gap? No. I determine a method and a system to qualify which ones are the good ones to short and which ones are the ones I don't want to do. So you can't go long every bullish gap and you can't short every bearish gap. What about this guy over here? Look at this. This was a gap up. This failed. What happened? Market closed here, gapped up, failed, dropped. Okay, so you could not have gone long this and made money. And I wouldn't have shorted this, but it was a gap up. Here again, this closed here, gap down, rallied. Can't short every gap down. This was a gap down, it rallied. Okay. Actually, this was a gap down here to the next day and it rallied. So you have to look for the good ones. All right. This was a good one. Walmart, we did. This was a short. What did it do? This was earnings here. Again, this was a couple of weeks ago now. Stock closed here, gap down, rallying, boom. We did puts in this. We shorted this as an equity train. In fact, I got out of the puts a little bit too early here with this. This went to the dream target, sold off like hotcakes. Market did help this, but this was a good short the day that we did it. It was here on the 18th. Okay, this was February 18th. So, again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. This closed here at 147, opened in the morning around 138 and change. And it fell. Okay. So I get up in the morning, I'm always looking for these. And I'm always trying to find the good ones of these. Okay, to do them. Again, whether I go long or short, I, I first go to the short side. And one of the reasons I like to trade gaps is because I feel like they have a high risk to reward payout. Now, while some trades, you know, go bigger than others, my goal is to get one to one, but some trades are more than one, which is great. It depends how fast they set up, how big they go, if the market's with it or not. But most of the trades we do are quick profits where we're in and out. And that's why also it is a nice uh, strategy to trade because if you do have something else to do, or if you live like on the West Coast, I have people in the room that are on the West Coast with me, they trade in the morning, then they do go to work because they're done early. Now we changed the clocks this Sunday, but we're still gonna be three hours from California. And then we'll be two hours from, I think from Arizona. Now, what is the strategy that I trade based off of? What am I really looking for? I'm looking for institutional money, which comes into the gap. It's either buying or selling, buying or selling comes in, okay? So when I'm doing a trade, when I'm, well, first of all, before I even do it, I get up in the morning and I look at it and I'm looking at what's happening. Is this getting bought? Is this getting sold off? What's happening here? And again, the market's been crazy lately, up, down, all around. Even if I looked at the market right now and if it was crashing, it could be completely different tomorrow morning. So even if I look at stuff at night, I always double check it in the morning. I'm looking for institutional money. Then I developed a process where I will rate the gap using that data, which is price data on the day chart to determine if the money is going to follow through, follow through in the live day. Okay, and either direction that we happen to be doing it. So it is about a focus and I think less is more right now, specifically in these times. And I feel like, 
you know, it's been a, it's almost a year anniversary since COVID. Again, New York shut down before the country shut down a year ago. We're talking about that today because I was like, what was the date of that? It was March 12th. You know, when, when, when I'm focused, okay, on one thing, I do so much better. And then I just plop on the size. And I really think that that is key as well um, to pretty much anyone. Now, if I'm reading the directional bias of the market and I want to do several trades of the market, that's okay too. But the reality is that I think size, focus, one pick. Now, if I do one pick and my top pick works, will I do another one? Probably not. Probably not. I'm probably done for the day. You have to look at it like your job is done for the day when you make your money, which is your goal, whatever your goal happens to be. If you're risking $1,000, your goal should be 1000 That doesn't mean that if you make $800 and it goes to the target, you get out of the 800 that you're going to continue to take another trade just to make 200 No. Again, this is not an exact science. Trading is you're living in the gray area. It is not black and white. And many, many traders make that mistake. They fail because something doesn't go exactly to a number, exactly to a target, or, or do something exact. Support and resistance even are areas. This is not an exact science. You have to live in the gray. And that's part of understanding and accepting that some trades that you take will lose. Some trades I take lose. But you have to win overall. You're living in the gray. And get, and get used to it. Instead of fighting it, fighting it with the black and white mentality, go with it, okay? Because very few people can live in that gray area. Again, I have a niche in the way that I read the market, specifically in the way that I read gaps and also the way I read a one minute chart, which is how I take my entries. But I do think the way that I look at the market, the way that the market is, and, and just the whole shebang that I feel like I look at that in a very unique perspective too. All the people that were complaining about the thing with the hedge funds and Reddit and all the nonsense that went on, whenever that was like a month ago now, again, like two months ago, whenever that started, you know, to me, the whole concept of people whining and complaining about hedge funds is completely ridiculous and erroneous. Accept the fact that hedge funds are in the market. Learn where they take positions on and off and trade with them. You'll do a lot better. You're not going to change the system. You will not change the system and no one group of Reddit people on a chat will either. You have to see what the system is, find your niche, find a way to make it work for you so you can be successful and make money. Live within the confines of the system. Live within the gray area. Okay, and be very pinpointed and focus on what you do. And that is something, again, that many people don't want to absorb or accept or whatever. They just want to fight it, fight it, fight it. Don't fight it. You want to trade, accept what it is and go for it. Embrace it, actually. Any questions here so far? Okay, I'm going to keep talking. Anyways, one of the other reasons to trade gaps is as a multi-purpose use, which you can do it for options and day trades. So, you know, I don't do options at every trade. I tank. We did do Apple puts today as well as the Apple short, which which it was good. They worked. But again, I don't necessarily do them at every single stock ticker that I do. And again, you can make nice profits. Specifically with options, you can carry them overnight, which is great. And I like the day trades too because they move fast. You can get a couple dollar move in something like we got in the Apple. Then that's fabulous. So I don't trade cheap stocks. I don't trade low float stocks. I don't trade any of those Reddit stocks now. I will never trade them again, the ones they've screwed up and messed up the charts. I'm looking for a big move and most of the moves of things that you would know, that you have traded, that you that you that you've heard of the company. You bought their products. You're aware of them. They're talked about on TV. Okay. And they have volume and momentum and they move. So this one we did here, this was last week. We did rust, and I know that it rallied today, but this was on March 3rd. We shorted it. I didn't do an option in it. I did a day trade, but actually a put would have worked. Stock closed here, gap down, rallying, boom. Here was the rust. Closed the night before here at 118 and change, boom. Over in the morning at 114, fell, dropped. Had a nice exit on this, went further. Again, had a quick one. Here was the trade. Entry was 113.80. Shares was 3,000. This is an advanced risk of 2550. You do not have to risk $2,500. You could take 1,000. You could have taken one third of this. You could have taken 200 shares, okay? Your risk should be based on the size of your account and also whatever your margin equity buying power in full is, which if you have questions about that, you can email me um, separate. So Kathy, you can plot my email in the room. It's melissa at thestockswish.com. But anyways, I thought this was a good exit. I basically was looking for a buck, but it ended up going breaking 112 and went to 
That's the thing I went to 110 something. Yeah, I think it did. I think this went almost $2 from here, which is hilarious. But 112.75, profit 3,150. So let's take a look at it. This is over here. Again, 9.30, open, closed here, gap down. So this is, again, rushed. This was on the third. So I make the decisions of the daily, but then whether I want to do it or rate it, and then I'm taking the trade in the one minute. Boom, we shorted it, got the drop, shorted it, got the drop. You could get out here, you could have held it. Here it came down, broke 112. And again, I think this really did go to uh, down to 110 something. Here, let's look back. Oh, that was during the day. I have to go back and look at it. So that was a nice short. And again, selling action creates panic. We're shorting it. We're shorting the panic, okay? This is, I'm explaining to you conceptually why this works. But again, I'm rating the gap in the morning to determine that Ross is a short, that we're not going to go long it, that we are going to short it, and then we short it, okay? Now, if you, oh, here, I have the beginner trader risk. If you want to take 1,000 shares, risk was only 850 bucks. That's a nice amount. That's plenty. You could have made $1,000 doing this. It was a buck. And again, you could have held it longer. Same trade, less size, okay? And very, very fast in, out, in, out. Again, take it, get out, take it, get out, take it, get out, boom. And we could have done it with Apple today. I chose to hold it. I chose to at a high level of conviction, but I'm sure some people got out of Apple today early, like fast in the morning. So anyways, that was a 10 minute trade. And that's typical for what, the, what, what we do. And again, it was big profits. So let's look at the next one here we did. This was, that was last Wednesday, this was Tuesday, it was March 2nd. We shorted DDD, closed tear gap down, fell. This ended up going bigger. <laughs> this went to the dream target. I get out of this early, but again, I like the morning train. Short entry was 3630. 2000 shares risk 2600. Exit was 3460. This went to 31. In fact, I think it went to 30 something. Oh no, here, I do have the whole thing in here. Profit 3400. Okay, let's go back. So again, this was a morning trade. I like the fast ones, just to be done with it. But anyways, we got in it, we got the drop out, quick one here by 10, but look where it went. Yeah, I did have the whole thing in here. I squished this, this is a one minute. You could have held this all the way down to 31, that's insane. It went almost to another $4 from where we exited it. And I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good trade. It was a, almost a $2 move. But anyways, it kept going. That was Tuesday. Here was the beginner risk, 1,000 shares. Risk is 1,300, exit 3,460, boom. Profit, 1,700, out. Again, could have made more. Do you care? You're never gonna get out of the low of the day in every short. You're never gonna get out of the high day in every long unless you hold something all day and it power trends down. I mean, I had a good exit in the Apple today simply because of the fact that it kept going and going and going and it closed near the lows, but that's rare. So did the market too, but most of the times you're doing a trade, you are not going to get out at the very, 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 very highest point. Again, I teach targets and exits in the gap class, but either way, you do the best you can. You have your goal in sight. When your goal is made and it starts to back up, boom, take it. Because there's no guarantees. No guarantees that Powell isn't going to talk. No guarantees that something crazy isn't going to happen. For whatever reason, the market has been dropping on interest rates rising, which I think makes no sense, and I don't think that's a real reason. But either way, when you have the money, it's there. It's never over to the fat lady sings, and the money is in your account. And the only way that happens is when you're green is to book it. So you have to be on top of these things when you have a goal. This was a fast one, too. We were in and out of 15 minutes, but again, you could have made more. You could have been in that all day. I think the market sold off that day too. I have to go back and look. Any questions here? So far from anyone. How's everyone doing? Any questions? Quiet group tonight. Quiet as mouses. 
Now here is Twitter. I am gonna show you a long, because again, I said why sometimes go long even though I prefer to short. Here was Twitter. This had a gap up here in earnings. This closed here, gapped out. We did a bunch of trades in this. We did calls, we went long, okay? Anyways, then it moved here, then it rallied. We're gonna go over this trade here. This was another gap up, moved up, poof, went, and another one here. Now I wanna show you here, this was a gap down. You see, you couldn't have shorted it. Closed here, gap down. This would not have worked as a short, as a gap down. That's why, again, you can't short every gap down, you can't go long every gap up. Here was a gap up that failed. Closed here, gapped up, failed, dropped. So again, this is why I devise a certain method and, and system to determine what trades I'm going long for a follow through in the bullish gap, what trades I'm shorting for a follow through in a bearish gap. Now in this case here, we had to follow through the upside and we did it. Now this was, well, I showed the advanced risk and beginner risk here. We went long here. Uh, I, and this, isn't, this is the daily, I'll show you the one minute in a minute. Entry was 73. We got a buck 70 out of it, 74.70. It was a good exit though. Profit 4,780, why? Share quantity, plop on the size, take it, get out. Beginner risk, 1,000 shares, you could have made 1,700 bucks. Now here's the one minute, just wanna show you this here. This was 216, we went long this Twitter. And it wasn't a, 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 an early entry actually, it was a little bit later. We went long here at 73, okay? Right in here, again, snug as a bug. Got the rally up, poof, out. Now this trade was not 15 minutes, not 10 minutes. It took a little bit under than an hour because again, this was a long and longs take longer to go than shorts. Again, that's why I prefer to short. But I wanna show you here long because I do go long, but still an hour in a trade is fast. That's still fast when you figure out the market's open six and a half hours a day. And again, that's why I like apps. It's momentum, it's speed, it's the big move. It's the immediate confirmation. And it's really about plopping on the size. If you have a small account, you can make money trading. Just like if you have a big account, you can lose money trading. One has nothing to do with the other. If you have a small account, you have to take trades according to your account size. But even if you have a big account, you don't wanna blow up your account if you don't know what you're doing. So the best thing you can do for yourself, no matter what size account you have, is learn how to trade well. Start out with a small size. Start out with a beginner size. Build on that. Prove to yourself you can do it after a week or after a month. And then continue increasing your size over time. Okay. Any questions here so far? Shelly, I see you here. I don't know how you're doing. Galahad, I see Galahad here. I don't know if you're back to trading yet, Galahad. All right, so just to give you kind of an idea here, like if you risk a dollar, you know, you're looking to make a buck. But my share quantity varies. It varies on depending on the size of the stop because I use stops. I use a living order stop. If I'm calling a trade in the room, I might say 50 by 75. That's what, 25 cents. Or I might say 50 by... 25, which would what? Be what? 75 cents. So because my my stop, the difference between the entry and the stop varies from trade to trade. I don't always take 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 shares or 1,000 or 1,000 or 1,000 shares. This is not an exact science either. I rough it out. You know, my, my, I have my amount that I want to risk and it's roughly sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less because again, I got to get in the trade. This is not an exact science. If my risk is $2,500 a trade, some trades I may risk $2,350. Some trades I may risk $2,700. It's, it's about getting it, okay? Do you know what I'm saying? And you have to get in the trade. And I kind of rough it in my mind. I'm like, okay, we're doing Apple. This could be a buck fifty, a dollar. You know, I kind of have it in my mind, but then not until I see the setup do I know exactly what it is. But I do call the trades in the live room, um, you know, which if you've been in the room, which I know some of you have been in the room, you've been in, you've done trials before, you're familiar with that. That's how I call it. Um, yeah, Jeanette, just email me. Just email me then. Do you train right now? You have to have the time in the morning early to trade. I mean, that's just, that's when you want to be there. But if you can't do money through, through Friday, that's okay. Do when you can. I think, you know, for a lot of people, the options work good because you can do other stuff. You don't have to babysit them and you could take an options trade. 
if it costs a dollar, you pay the buck, you get the order in to sell it, and you could put a sell order at 150, for example, which, you know, if it fills, it fills. If it doesn't, it's a cancel day order. Or you can put it at two if you pay a buck. So you don't have to watch it or babysit it. But I still think you should check your trades at one point every day, lunch or something. But options work well for people that cannot trade in the room every morning actively. So one of the benefits of trading, at least specifically, gaps with me, you are only really at your desk for the first hour. You work for yourself. And the only thing stopping you from making a lot of money is your risk size and then obviously your skill set. You know, people say, oh, I want to do this. It's impossible. I, I, I'm losing for years. I don't know what I'm doing. Guess what? You don't have the right skill set then. Now, how are you going to learn the right skill set? Well, point one is you have to learn from someone that has a skill set. So a lot of people don't have any skill sets. I always laugh because I do these webinars. I did a webinar. I think I did too many webinars last week. It was webinar after webinar at a webinar explosion with other things that were in groups. And it's always funny to listen to other people talk, which, you know, I'm in and out and I hear the end of the beginning of some of the other things. People really truly believe that when they buy an automated system, it's going to work. There's no skill resulted from that. And don't ever buy any automated system because it's not going to work. If there was such a thing, no one would make any money. It's it's the whole purpose of it. You, you yourself, you have to use your brain. You can say, well, the smartest people win. Well, not necessarily, but most of the time. You could say the rich people win. Well, not necessarily, but yeah, most of the time. Because when you have a lot of money behind you, and I'm talking about the hedge funds, for example, you usually can find a way to get more money behind you. Whereas if you're one person, it's much more difficult. I'm talking about maneuvering in and out of positions. So, you know, no machine is going to make the best decisions for you. You're going to make the best decisions for you. You just have to learn the skill. It's like tennis. Tennis is a skill. Any sport is a skill. Golf is a skill. Okay? You have to learn the skill. And then you can make it to use it to your advantage where you can trade over time and really get somewhere with this. I mean, many, many people just don't want to put the time and energy and effort and money into trading, I find. And they're in and out in your life. Now, while you can do other things while you're figuring this out and while you're trading too, again, you don't have to be in the room Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You don't have to do every single option I call. But the reality is that the, the amount of time you put into it should be full on. It should be 100%. It's like... It's like, say you were going on a date, and you're going on a date. Your attention should be on that person while you're on that date. If you're at dinner for two hours, you're focused on that person. You shouldn't be texting your phone. You shouldn't be on Instagram. You shouldn't be, you know, picking up, checking work emails and all of that stuff. And that's what that's how people act nowadays, which is nuts. So you have to be focused for the period of time that you're trading. Whatever it is, 35 minutes, two hours a week, whatever. That's how you're going to get good because it's about the skill. Okay. That's okay. You can dip your toes in, Jeanette. Toe dipping is okay. Anyways, there's a lot of benefits to trading. I mean, specifically for me living in New York in the last year with COVID, it's been a huge benefit to not have to worry about, um, gosh, so many things. Going out in the city, everything being closed, um, you know, being able to do this from my home with a computer and everything else. I mean, who would have thought? But, you know, there's just... There's a variety of benefits. And also because of the fact that you have unlimited income potential, which which I did when I did mortgages too. That's what I did previous to this. But it was very difficult because I was dealing with banks and trying to get loans approved and underwriters. And there was always somebody that I had to argue with to get deals done. With this, well, I have trades that lose. And it sucks when they do. I don't really argue and have an argument or a fight with the market. I go back and I look and I see, did I make a mistake? What did I miss here? Did I, did I do anything wrong? Very often, I didn't make a mistake. It's just the odds of the game. Sometimes things don't work. My 26-point rating system, if you come to me, if you learn it, the system that I use is about high odds. It's putting the odds in your favor. There is no 100%. You have to take a trade that has very, very high odds. And I don't take low odds trades. But sometimes things still don't work anyways because that's the nature of the game. Like we talked about, living in the gray, no black and white. But I do follow my own rules. I created the rules. I follow them. The rules that I set that I make, I follow. So I don't do any gaps that don't rate per my 26-point system. That I do 
follow to the letter. But again, there's so many benefits to doing this. So, 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 so many. And finally, the weather's breaking here in New York. One of the benefits will be being able to get outside in the in the spring and in the summer here in the in the warm weather, assuming that the city wants to open. So we'll see. Any other questions here? I'll take a look at the market here when we're done. Uh, go ahead. Any other questions? Yeah. So I mean, for me, I was extremely motivated to learn how to do this. If you're not motivated, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be hard for you to make it. But if you wanna learn what I do, the system that I do is called the Golden Gap Rating System. It has a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, preferably, like Apple. A big move in the day, again, like Apple, which we did today. Early confirmation of the bias on the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential, which you saw in some of the trades here we talked about from last week. If you get in something and it goes, the momentum should carry you forward. When you're fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, it's very difficult to make money. Like if you were trying to go long apple today, you were fighting the grain, you were fighting the momentum, you were fighting against the gap, okay, and you lost. There was no way to make money going long apple. I don't even think you could have scalped it today. It rarely pushed back whatsoever at all. It's just the momentum was to the downside, okay? And the money does come easy when you're getting the direction right, which is what? With the institutional money, which is what? It's based on the gap, which means what? If the gap rates high, because again, not every sh gap down can you short and not every gap up can you go long. I mean, you couldn't have gone long the market today and, and done well because of what happened. Again, we'll look at the market when I'm done here. But my system is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to you trade each morning using a checklist. This is the meat and potatoes of how I make the choices. I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. I'll wait until the morning to figure it out, but I will get up in the morning and rate my gap to determine it. This checklist tells you what to trade, when and in what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. Any questions here so far about gaps, shorting, anything? Now, I do have an options newsletter, okay? I know some of you have asked me about it. I see some of you here. This, you just get the newsletter. It gets a trade gets emailed to you. You take the trade when you get it. Like I said, I called Apple Puts today. You take the trade when you get it. Boom, you get in. Now, we did calls on Twitter. This was, again, a bullish gap. We went long a bunch of times in this. This was on the 10th. I think this was the first day. Yeah, it was. This was the first day. And I had sent this out in the afternoon. I called the 65 calls. These were really decently priced, by the way. 215 was the price of one. Again, an advance risk, 75.25, sold at 416, profit 85.75, 113% return on in investment. This is a nice trade. I'm looking for 50 to 100. If I get 100, I take it. This had a nice move. Here's the daily. So this drop, boom, I called it around 1.30 in the afternoon, which is unusual. Most of the options trades I do call in the free market, but this drop down, called it, poof, took off, and then it ran up, and that was out to the 19th. Not that you had to hold it. Actually, would have made more if you had held it. Then I called the 68 calls on Friday. Again, very well reasonably priced. 260 sold at 525, return investment 102%. Again, risk 7800, profit 7950. This was on Friday the 12th. Going to go back to the daily. This was here when it broke out. When it broke out here, poof. And these I called earlier on in the pre-market, 816 in the morning. You're not taking the trade until the open. You're waiting, but at least you know them what I'm looking at, what I'm doing, what I'm getting organized for for the day. And sometimes I will send them out that early. Sometimes I've sent them out at 7 a.m. But you're not doing the trade until the open. The options newsletter subscription, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up for that. I'll, I'll talk about that more at the end. Yeah. Just email me and they can sign up for that if they email me. It's an annual subscription though. No monthlies, no quarterlies. It's for the whole year. Anyways, I find that this is a good topic. And I, I started talking about this in a podcast I did about two weeks ago. And I think I need to do more topical discussions about this because people are really getting to the point where they are looking at the economy. And again, we've seen some level of slight inflation. Uh, you know, rates are rising. I don't think it's catastrophic, but you know, the reality is that things, prices for things are, are, have gone up. Now, I don't notice that they've gone up this year, 2021, to be honest with you. They went up last year. 
So why everyone's getting crazy about rates now, I don't know. Because really, we, we started to see, once things opened up last summer, we saw prices lift up. I mean, here in New York, they're charging like a surcharge now at restaurants. Now, I haven't been out to eat, but I have friends that have, and they told me that, where they're charging a percentage on the bill. You know, so it's things are getting more expensive. That's definitely true. I have not raised my prices since COVID. I mean, I, I, I just haven't. But I've found that many, many things are charging surcharges for COVID or they raise their prices for COVID. And they're really trying to make up the ground for the lost year or what they didn't make last year because of COVID, which to me doesn't really make any sense. Now, I support restaurants in certain industries and companies I don't want to go under. But, you know, in reality is that we are in an environment that we're in a slight, slight level of, you know, inflation. Now, will it continue where things get better? I really don't know. I really don't know. But I think the idea of having extra money, even if you enjoy your job and you want to continue on with your job and have extra money trading, I don't think that's a bad idea. In fact, I think it's a good idea. And even if you, again, want to continue your job, the idea of having a fallback, a fallback way to make money, if for some reason you would lose your job, God forbid, God forbid, like many people have, I don't think it's a bad idea to have a fallback support system, a fallback financial support system. And if you wait to the last minute, if for some reason something happens, and very often it's it's not a good idea because you're kind of stuck and your back's up against the wall. I mean, it, today's world is just not the same as 25 years ago, or 10 years, years ago, or even one year ago when COVID hit. What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. I live that with my mortgage job. So I'm speaking here directly to life experience. Look at the world economy and the decisions that lawmakers are making for you. And you know, because I lived the, law, the, the life experience I had, you know, I'm teen years ago, I was prepared for COVID. I was never going to let anything like that happen to me again. And again, I'm very, very independent, but you know, I was great at doing mortgages. And when that happened, it had nothing to do with me. So I lived that life experience, but many people were living it in 2020. So you have to think about your own future and you know, no one can determine what's going to exactly happen. Nobody really knows, but if we're independent and when you trade, you work for yourself. Again, this idea of being self-sufficient, entrepreneurial, you know, independent. We can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on, which has been a problem in the last year. If the company has poor management, they might fail, and it has nothing to do with you. Or, again, the world changes. Or your industry might fail and it has nothing to do with you. Again, that's what happened to me with the mortgage system and the healthcare system. That failed, and now you're seeing all of this with the travel industry, the restaurant industry in the last year. If you're a skilled person, you have a great mind, you can do this, you can learn how to do it. I'm teaching people how to do it. You have to find a way to create your own job security, your own financial security. No one is gonna create it for you. A $1,400 stimulus check is gonna get you zip. zippity do poop It's really nothing. And when you think about the fact that these lawmakers waited five months to get these checks out to people that they're probably not even gonna get to April, at the end of April or May, it's, it's an abomination on both ends of the spectrum, both political parties. People are so far behind in some of their rent. Some people in New York have been not paying rent for a year. I don't know what's going to happen. The, the, the moratorium is up May 1st. It's going to be interesting to see if they extend it again. You have to find a way to become more self-sufficient. So you can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market. And not only that, make money trading. And it's really even beyond the money. It's about getting good. It's about getting good. When you get good, the money will come. And then you add the size. You've got to get good. You've got to get good at this. You have to get good. I'm constantly, constantly looking at charts. Now, I actually took the weekend off. I said, I'm taking this weekend off. I gave myself two days not to look at anything. And I rarely do that. I felt like I needed a mental break. But the reality is that I'm constantly, constantly looking at stuff and constantly working on getting better. And, and I have, you know over the last, you know, 13 years that I've been trading. Any questions here so far? Anyways, the strategy that I trade is called Golden Gaps. It's one strategy. It's all you need to be successful in the market. One thing you could do for options, swing trades, day trades, and you do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, and you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, this will make you money. I was in some kind of webinar last week and somebody had something up and it was a disaster. If I, if I, if we have time at the end, I'll show it to you. I actually clipped it. 
I, I hope I don't have the person's name on it. I want to show you. Like, it, it was, you couldn't read a damn thing on the person's chart. I thought, oh my God, how is this person doing anything at all? You couldn't read anything. That person had so many indicators on it. It looked like a, it looked like, it looked, it looked like a, like a, like a child had painted a picture like it was a, like a three-year-old. I mean, it was disgusting. You couldn't read any line on it. You couldn't even read a candle. You couldn't read the price or a number to save your life. And the person was making trading decisions based on it. Again, there's no skill set involved there. Use your brain. Keep your brain in check, okay? You must get your brain level up to a certain point. And you know how you do that? You keep your stress level low. And you know what helps with your stress level? Getting a good night's sleep. Eating right. If you want to smoke and drink, do it on the weekend. Don't do it Monday for, through Friday when you need your brain. Cut down, cut back on the sugar. Get rid of toxic relationships in your life. Put yourself in an office and close the door when you trade that no one bothers you. Turn your phone off. Again, turn your phone off at a certain point at night. Everyone's sleeping with their phones anymore. I wasn't a habit of that. I had to stop it. I just turn it off and just shut it down. Okay? We have to get in places where we are less stressed and don't risk more money than you can afford to lose, too. You know, because, and don't be in too many positions overnight at once that you can afford to think about if you're in options overnight as well. Don't be in too many things. Keep your stress level down so you can make good decisions. It's the best thing. Kathy, you need to work on getting your stress level down. You, you know, it's, it's really about making good decisions and using your brain. Your brain can do amazing things. Trust me, it's one of my best qualities. I was having a conversation with someone about it because we started talking about COVID and the vaccine, and I'm not going to go on about that right now. But your, you need your brain. You won't make it in this life without your brain. Okay. And in reference to trading, when I'm trading, I'm making decisions super fast, like in milliseconds. Sometimes when I'm in these trades in the one minute, in and out. And my brain does it. It just automatically does it. So you need your brain. Now, if you're following me in the room and you're doing it, you know, I'm calling it, but you still have to react. So your brain has to be sharp and you have to be awake and alert. Okay. Can't be half asleep or no, no food in your stomach. So I'm trading between 9.30 and 10. If that fits your schedule, schedule, if you can work from home or from an office where you can trade, then maybe gaps is for you. So again, I'm strict with my stops. I put the stop in. I'm looking for quality, not quantity. You should be risking a certain amount where you're flipping it over one. I'm talking about the day trades. Sometimes the options go more than 100%, but sometimes I get out of trades that are 50%. We did Facebook Friday. It was up into the weekend. On the Friday, I got out of it. I got out of it. Okay, so you can get out of an options trade at 50%. But anyways, my system is called the Golden Gap. Here's some testimonials. What are you saying, Kathy? Yeah, everybody's been a homebody in the last year. And that's okay. But, you know, at least for me here in New York, I need, I need some, I need to get out a little bit. So I'm glad the weather's starting to break. Anyways, I've had a bunch of very successful uh, students write me some nice tem testimonials here. I plopped them in the room. And many of these people have been with me a long time. So I will say that it's really nice that I have students with me, been with me for years and years. They can trade on their own. Jackie's one of them. She could trade without me, but she loves being in the room and I make good calls. So what experience do you need to do this? None. I've taught people from the ground up. And sometimes if you have bad thoughts in your head or bad experiences, it will get in your way. So you don't need to know anything. You can come to me and I can teach you everything to trade. Candlesticks all from the ground up. And then really the point system which is called the Golden Gap 26-point checklist. And it's a complete course to learn how to trade. The class is called the Golden Gap course. It's a two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks in our professional bearish gap. So the bearish class is this weekend, March 13th and 14th. The bullish class is the first week of April. So it's 9 to 5. Cost of the class is $69.99. But I am doing a friends and family sale only through this Friday, which is a great deal. I do it once a year. It's $1,000 off the class. I never do this. So don't... Expect to see this six months from now or two months from now. Once a year, I do the friends and family special. It's a thousand off. So fifty nine ninety nine for the class this weekend. Now, if you want to do the bullish class, you can sign up for the bullish class by Friday for April. Okay, that class is in April, and then I'm doing twenty percent off the other subscriptions. Now, someone asked about the newsletter. Twenty percent off. You can sign up for the year for fifty five ninety nine twenty. It's a great deal. Whole year of all the options trades get emailed to you. If you want to do that, 
The market report is a weekly letter, normally 500 on sale for 400, 20% off. You must be in the trading room. I've done the class, or not in the trading room, but you must have done the Golden Gap class to join the trading room. This is 20% off, so it's $31.99 for the year. Trends course is a great, great class. Again, this is 20% off, $7.99. You get one month free of the training room in this class, one month free of the training room in the wealth class for four seventy nine twenty. dollars I haven't done this class in a while. I'm doing it in April. Entries course, again, 20% off, $11.99. Gap options course, you get one month free of the Gap Options newsletter. So this is, this is a great class. This is in March. $2,000 for the half-day class, one month of the letter. And then if you're interested in mentoring sessions, you do not have to have been a prior student to do the sessions. I'm doing them regularly on Skype. Some I've done on Zoom. They're very popular with people. This is, you know, whether they've done my class or not. But many of them are students that just want to get better and sharpen up their skills. Okay. Any questions here so far? I'll pull up the market. Let me just pull this up quick. <laughs> market's a disaster so we closed here I'm looking at the queues 299.51 we broke the 300 number late in the period late in the day we broke it now it looks like we're slightly lifting back so this was oh no wait a minute here let's go to four so this was four now we're pushing back it looks like we've, we've run up about a buck so a little bit over a dollar so we'll see where we go. JD, I give so much information. I'm not giving any more than I give. You can come to the trial this week and listen to every single thing I do if you want. I get that question often. JD is asking a question. If I'm making this much money, he doesn't understand or is, is it a she? JD, are you a he or a she? Let me look who this is. If it's a she, are you a he or a she? JD, I can't tell if you're a he or a she. Are you a girl or a guy? You're a male. Okay, well, this is JD's question. I thought he was a he. I think I've seen you before, JD. Why do I... JD's question is, if I'm making this much money, in other words, if I'm successful, he doesn't understand the reason to be teaching people. Somebody try to answer that question for JD or guess, and this is anybody that knows me. Galahad knows me, for example. Galahad's actually met me in New York. Why do you think I'm teaching people if I'm doing well trading? Somebody guess before I answer. Galahad probably knows me pretty well. He can probably answer this. Actually, Galahad's been to my apartment in New York. I get it, JD. Galahad, are you alive? I enjoy it. Well, that's true, but that's not the that's not the real reason. Although that is true, that's true. Galahad, I thought you knew me better than that. Guess again. Oh, now Galahad got it. <laughs> because I love to make money. I mean, let's just call it. Let's just be frank. When people ask me that question, and and no, if I'm not, a, I'm not going to take offense, JD, and you're not. I don't want you to take offense to my to my response. When someone asks me why I want to do something when I'm already making money, it's it's like it's the mentality about the person, the way that they think about money. And again, I live in Manhattan, so you know it's kind of like. The more, people in New York, okay, make money doing lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. No one in New York would ever ask me that question. But I understand that New Yorkers are a little bit different. But the reality is that people that are wealthy, high net worth individuals, and that have a mindset about making money, doing multiple, multiple things and having multiple income sources would never ask that question. The answer is implied. The answer is obvious, JD. Because if you can make money doing lots and lots of things, why not? In fact, I have some people that are pitching me. First of all, I'm on television. And people say, well, why are you doing TV if you're making money trading and making money, t uh, you know, why do you want to have a television show, Melissa? Why, why do you want to get paid for Instagram ads when you're, I mean, I could go on and on and on about income streams, JD. Uh, you know, social media, YouTube. You know, YouTube pays people for hits. You may not have known that. YouTube pays me and multiple other people on social media for views. 
So the thing is, like, I mean, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to say this to help you. Open your mind up. If your mind is that closed off that that's your thinking, then you got to open it up because you're kind of in the because your your mindset is not in that wealth manifestation mindset. Do you know what I'm saying? Some people now I'm nowhere near on this level. I mean, it would be great if I could ever get to that level with my branding someday, which will probably entail me having my own television show. But there are some people they get paid to put their name on something like a label, Trump. Okay, the Kardashians. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Somebody uses somebody's name on a product and they get paid. Boom, boom, boom. Money, 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 money. Do you know what I'm saying? And no one ever says, oh, if you're, if you're successful in making money, why would you make money doing that? It's silliness. It's, it's total silliness, really. It's a silly, silly, silly thing to even ask. But the thing is, I get why people ask it because JD said he's been burned. He's taken classes and been burned. Hey, I took a class and I paid a lot of money when I first started trading. In fact, I paid more than my class cost now. I paid eight grand. I paid eight grand and that was in 20, that was in 2008. And I didn't, I didn't learn how to make money and I didn't learn how to trade. I didn't, I didn't harbor any negative feelings towards that person. I didn't hate that person. I didn't hate the market. I didn't hate the industry. I just said, you know what? I think I can figure this out on my own, but I couldn't take another classes and you know, but the thing is, I wanted to do gaps. I gravitated to gaps. There wasn't much out there about gaps. The stuff that was out there I found didn't work. So anyways, long story short, many people take classes. Most people do take classes. Most people lose money in the market. Most people lose money, take classes, don't get anything out of them until they come to the right person. You got two choices, JD. You either decide you're gonna create your own system, which is possible, I did it. it took me three years and a lot of cash of my own hard earned money and I kept doing mortgages at the same time. That is your choice, that's choice one. Do it, go for it. It's possible, I did it. But it's not something that's gonna happen in three weeks. It will take years of your life and a lot of money. You need to bankroll yourself to do it because when you're trading on a demo, you ain't gonna learn any system or create your own system. You gotta trade with real money to feel it and do it and go through the experience of it and the, and the pains and the, and the ups and downs and the emotional highs and lows, which I did till you figure stuff out right. That is something that is an option that is open to any person that trades. Or two, you must pay someone to learn. And you pay people to learn and you get what you pay for. When people pay for these classes that are worth a couple thousand dollars or 500 bucks, what do they expect to do? They really expect to make money paying for that stuff? Come on, get real. No one would have as anything good would give it away for free. And you may have to take class after class after class after class until you find the right person because it is a journey. It is not a one-shot deal. Very few people go out there and learn how to trade right away. And my expectation when I took that class in 2008, again, I'll just be honest with you, my expectation was that I was going to learn how to trade and I was going to learn how to make money. But once I threw myself into it, I realized that it was more challenging than I thought. And the class was very basic. I learned technical analysis and I took that information and I utilized it to build on it to create a system for myself. But general technical analysis will not teach you how to make money. Buying on a moving average or things like that is, you know, it's not consistent enough to work. But I, I understood through that class that technical analysis was important. It was extremely important. So I, every class you took that you say you lost money on JD, you've learned something from it. You may not have learned enough to make it, but you learned something. So change your attitude about all the people you hate that you paid for classes that you lost in Say, you know what, I'm here today with the information and skills that I have. I'm not there yet, but I learned something. I learned one nugget or one little thing from that. And that one little thing may be something that can help you. Do, do you know what I'm saying? So try to change your attitude about it a little bit. You know what I mean? Well, if you have, you have a residential housing portfolio, Okay, well then I I don't know understand why you asked that question. Then I got to be honest with you. Uh, Shelly, you can email me for that if you want to be in the open house. If you have alt you if you have other sources of income, if if you are someone that is wealthy, JD, then you must be just mad at the people you paid for classes. You must just like be mad at those people or something. You kind of got to get over that. You, you kind of have to just like let it go. 
You know what I mean? Or maybe you're mad at the market. I don't know. I mean, there's times that I get mad at the market. I mean, I'm going to pull up the market here right now. I was mad at the market last week. And let me tell you why. I expected the market on Monday one week ago to carry itself and through and go over the high. It failed. It didn't. I was mad at the market last week. I shook it off. I got over it. We rallied the end of the week on Friday. But my expectation on Monday was, woo, we're going to hold. I lost in calls last week that I went long on Monday. I lost. I lost in calls, okay, because I thought the market was going to follow through. So I was mad at the market, kind of like Wednesday to Thursday. I got over it quick, and then I moved on. And so that's what you have to do. I call it amnesia. You cannot harbor negative feelings about trades that you lost in or people you took classes for or the market itself overall or any specific stock for more than 24 hours, 48 at the, 48 at the most. That's another, you know, bugaboo that I think traders have. They, when I talk to people on the phone, they talk to me about, oh my God, I lost 100 grand last year or I lost 200 grand in the last five years or I lost 50 grand or I lost this, I lost that. What do they think they're going to do? They're going to make all the money that they ever back lost in one trade or one week or one month? That's not realistic. That's not realistic. It's just not realistic. That's not life. You have to just look at it like you're moving forward. And the only way you can move forward is if you stop looking back. I mean, it's the same way with relationships. You could say if you get a divorce, you've had a bad marriage, someone cheated on you, or say you weren't even married. Say you were dating someone, they cheated on you. You see it all the time in, in, in the, uh, the people on TV and stuff, in these shows and stuff. What are you going to do? Never fall in love again? Be miserable and alone for the rest of your life because you were dating someone or got married and had to get divorced and they cheated on you? At some point, you have to let it go. And trust me, moving on from the market is a lot easier than forgiving people that have hurt you that you're in love with. So, I mean, if you can forgive people in the past for relationships, you certainly can forgive yourself for losses that you sustained in the market. I think the problem is people have so much judgment. They judge themselves and get mad at themselves for trusting in someone to teach them how to trade. And then they feel like they, they don't trust their own judgment then to go to someone new to learn how to trade. They, they, they are upset with themselves. Now, I don't know if that's what's going on with you, JD, but that's something that you personally need to examine. Personally, I'm just giving you my two cents here. Get over the fact that you're mad at yourself if you feel like you made a bad decision. We all make bad decisions. Maybe I mad at, made a bad decision going long the market last week. It was choppy before that, but I believed in the trade. I lost in it. But the reality is I can get over it pretty quickly. And part of that is just the ability to want to constantly, constantly, constantly move forward towards success, which is greater success. It's not about ever getting to necessarily the goal. I'm at the goal. I want the next goal. I want a television show. I want to move into a bigger apartment. I want to buy a place. I want to get married. I want to do this. I want to do that. It's, you know, it's never, you're, you're always moving forward if you're someone that's success-minded. You're, you're, you're always working towards that. In fact, maybe I, I don't give myself enough of a break. Like I said, I took the weekend off, which was good for me. But, you know, take something from this that having goals is important. And you've got to constantly be moving forward and assess where you're at. If you have a negative relationship with the market or, tr or trading educators, quite frankly, assess if that's really working to your benefit. Because if you have a bad attitude and you're still doing something like trading, it's not, you're working against yourself. It's like having a, it's like, it's like, it's like, a, it's like if I, it's like my father said this once when we were, we were exercising and we were going to go for a walk in the morning and my mother made pancakes. My, my father had this huge stack of pancakes before we went for a walk. And I didn't, I don't like to walk on an empty, I like to walk on an empty stomach in the morning. I don't like to eat. And we laughed and joked the whole time in the walk because my dad was dragging from the carbs. And I said, you know, he said he worked against, the pancakes worked against him. They did work against him. Don't work against yourself. If you're going to go out and exercise, don't eat a hot fudge Sunday before you go out. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, do not trade if you hate the market. It, it, don't do it. And don't sign up for a class if you hate all trading educators either until you get, until you get your attitude on right. All right, Kathy is going to have to go feed the cat. Listen, have a great night, everyone. If you want to travel the room, email me. <laughs> Galahad, I'll have to get the lowdown from you about the uh, Royals interview later. We'll talk about it in the open house tomorrow. 
I didn't watch it yet. I taped it. I taped it, but I saw the scuttle, but I go to bed early, but I did tape it. The Oprah interview. <laughs> All right. Very good. Have a good night.